Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today, and before we get into the video, I want to explain what I am doing. Alright, so this series is pretty much going to be a series of videos where I talk about whether or not Saitama can solo a certain universe, and how he would do it, and if there's any way they could combat him, and all the multiple ways he could do it. So yeah, we're starting off with with an anime universe with the Naruto verse. Something not that controversial. I'm pretty sure there's not too many people that think Saitama would lose to like Naruto. But I figured why don't we start off with Naruto verse and then you can tell me any universe. It could be Star Wars. It could be Dora. And I will do Saitama versus Dora. I will do that if you guys want to. So just tell me any universe you want me to do in the comment section down below. But let's get into talking about whether or not Saitama can solo the Naruto universe, if they can combat him, and how they could do it. Saitama had never won a fight in anything less than one single punch. So today, we will be talking about whether or not Saitama can solo the Naruto universe. There's obviously a lot of characters in the Naruto universe, so I'm really only going to be talking about the top tiers. Some of these you may not agree with me mentioning, but note that I'm only mentioning some characters because I just want to mention them so nobody can argue about them possibly being able to have the way to defeat him. Before we begin, I am inserting one disadvantage to Saitama. He can be affected by Genjitsu. Now, it doesn't mean it has to work on him well. All I'm saying is that it, he can theoretically be caught in Genjutsu. However, low-level Genjutsu wouldn't work. Only very high, high-level Genjutsu that will be mentioned later on in the series can work. Why don't we begin with the awesome teacher of Naruto, Sake, and Sakura, Kakashi Hakake. So, Kakashi has a shotting gun implemented in his eye given to him by Uchiha Obito after he died. Now what we need to talk about here is whether or not Kakashi could take out Saitama. The answer is no, he couldn't. Though he might be able to do some damage, but if Saitama would uh, caught off guard with Kamoi, which would probably catch him off guard, because Saitama had yet to encounter any eye-based abilities as far as I am aware. So he would likely be caught off guard by Kakashi Kamoi and could easily be have one of his arms blown off and sent into another dimension. The problem with this is that once he realizes what the eye can do, he still has his other arm. And right or left don't matter with Saitama. So even if Kakashi gets in a lucky hit and loses an arm, which you know what, we're going to keep that arm for the rest of the video. But even if he loses an arm, even if he loses his right arm, he still will just one punch Kakashi with his left arm. So why don't we move on to everybody? <laughs> I can't even say that with a face, straight face. Let's talk about whether or not Saitama can kill Sakura, or more accurately, the incredibly violent way he will kill Sakura. Alright. Sakura had no chance of victory in this fight. Sakura had absolutely no way of touching this guy. No way at all. What would probably happen would be, it is like within an actual anime episode, they would charge at each other, thought their fists would collide, and Sakura's entire body would have turned to ash. Alright, like, their fists would collide, Sakura's entire body would either turn to ash, or she would just disappear. Like, her body would just vanish, and like, her, and like, a, like bits and pieces of her clothes would just blow away in the wind. And Saitama just leaves a giant crater going back for miles. Unless Saitama, of course, pulled some stupid Saitama shit and just like broke every bone in her body with a single punch because he doesn't want to hurt women. I remember, the Saitama had something against hurting women. I think he may. I can definitely see him having a problem with hurting women. Maybe Saitama and he just doesn't care. So yeah, why are we talking about Sasuke now? So Sasuke is where things get interesting. I mean, Sasuke had some pretty hacked abilities. Like Amaterasu, which wouldn't really hurt Saitama. 
But we need to remember that Saitama's body is pretty much invulnerable. Like, we've never seen Saitama be dealt serious physical pain. So, honestly, I don't think Amaterasu would work on Saitama. So, yeah, I don't even know how that would work. Would Saitama, uh, would Amaterasu kill Saitama? I don't think it would. Maybe you do, but I don't even think if Sake, like, covered him completely in it. I think he'd probably just stand there like he was fine. Sake's main advantage comes in the form of his Susano, which I believe, in my opinion, it Susano, perfect. Like, the perfect, complete body Susano may be able to withstand a single punch from Saitama. A single one. Not just my opinion. All I'm saying is they may be able to withstand it. But I think once Saitama gets serious, and there's a serious punch to the, to the damn thing, I think the whole thing is going to be incinerated, and Sasuke is going to die. Instantly. Um, same with Naruto, honestly. Naruto didn't really have any way of combating Saitama. But this is, this is where we get into the interesting aspect of Naruto. Some characters are incredibly powerful, even if they're not as nearly as strong as Naruto. Some characters are like that. Look at Zunati and Sakura. Like, no, they're nowhere near Naruto level, but they have regeneration abilities that make his ability granted by Kurama look like shit. So, why don't we talk about the characters that have a natural advantage that could give them a chance of defeating Saitama. Edo Tensei Madara Uchiha. I figured we'd just get him over with right away. He does stand a slight chance. And because he is an Otente, he has the ability to regenerate from any known attack. The only exception to this is the truth staking orbs that are granted to Jinchuriki of the Tentail, and that has nothing to do with physical force, but has more so to do with the unique properties of the truth staking orbs. For more on that, check out Swag Kage's videos on all the things that this past save mode bullshit. But the point is, is that these abilities, plus everything else Madara is capable of, his wood style, his perfect Susano, all of that shit, could he beat, could he beat Saitama? No, he couldn't. I'm sorry, I, I feel like he'd probably give him the most trouble out of any of this cast, just because of the fact that Saitama is, is, it doesn't really fight with his head. And Madara would probably figure out with his shining on pretty early on in the fight that he needs to avoid getting hit by Saitama. Like, he would probably figure it out early on, like, if this guy hits me, I die. And with his shining gun and his Masatomi Uchiha Madara, he may very well be able to avoid getting hit. Not because he's faster, but because he's smarter than Saitama. So maybe he would last a little bit, but honestly, I don't see Madara winning this. I feel like Madara could do a, could actually be the only character here that could hurt Saitama with his Limbo clone. Saitama has, from what we know, no sensing abilities and no eyesight abilities. Besides for the fact that he's really physically fit, he's pretty damn normal. So he had no way of sensing or seeing the Limbo clone. But then again, Madara doesn't really have any way of doing damage. Now, there are certain Genjutsu that Madara could employ, but honestly, I don't want to talk about those with Madara, because he never uses them, more specifically, Izanagi or Iz and Izanami. But this is the whole thing, he never uses them, he never needs to use Izanagi or Izanami. And honestly, I just don't see him giving up a shotting gun. I still get that with Saitama would be over quickly enough, that he wouldn't have time to get desperate enough to be like, okay, I need to give up my shot and gone. And this is Madara. He really, he really relies on those eyes, and he wouldn't want to give them up that easily. So, you know what? I now I want to talk about what you've already, probably been waiting for. And I just think, tell you, Madara and Itanami and Itanagi are the perfect segment into it. Let's talk. Now, as I said earlier, again, Jisnu can affect him. Alright, let's talk about. Uchiha Itachi. Now, some of you are probably looking at me right now and saying, Sakura trained under the woman that cracked the perfect Susano, and she lost. So, how is Itachi winning? I have two words for you Izanami. Now, just to clarify, I believe Izanami would work on uh, Saitama, 
because of his nature. Saitama is only a hero because it's fun and because he wants to hopefully find somebody strong to fight. He's actually a character that has a lot of theories that he will turn evil. That is a thing. So it's sort of potential for you turning evil and you're only a hero not because you give a shit about other people. But because you like fighting strong people, I believe it is very likely that you would be affected by Itanami. Like, Saitama had no problem destroying massive amounts of city and causing insane amounts of collateral damage if it means him, like, one punching something. But let's get on to his fight with Uchiha Itachi and why Uchiha Itachi would come the closest to winning, or better yet to say, had the best chance of winning. Generally, it's hot geared around the level of characters like Zunade, Sakura, the Rai Kage, like the rest of the Kage. He's a regular Kage level dude. So generally, he didn't stand much of a chance. I'm not saying he's or he's, no character can beat him or stronger or weaker than him. I'm just saying that's, the, that's his league. Those are the characters that are in his league. So you're probably wondering... How could he even last long enough to cast it? Well, the first thing that needs to be acknowledged is that Itachi can do one-handed hand sign. He can do hand sign with a single hand. So that gives him a massive advantage. He can also cast Genjutsu incredibly subtly. Like, he can put you in a Genjutsu without even looking at you. He is a genius in that regard. That is what makes Itachi Uchiha such an amazing shinobi. So I do believe it is possible that while Saitama was fighting Itachi inside a Genjutsu, he could place him under, inf under uh, Izanami. The problem here is that, let's be honest, even if Itachi was able to place him, even if Itachi got him under a Genjutsu that would just have them fighting while he placed him under Izanami, he would lose so quickly in said Genjutsu that he would lose. Now you could argue Tsukuromi, me and Itachi would look, he would look Itachi in the eye, but that also brings into the question, from what I understand, Tsukuyomi inflicts real physical pain. Like, Kakashi actually felt like he was being stabbed through the stomach. Like, would that even, I don't think that would work on Saitama. Like, I don't think like, that Tsukuyomi would work on Saitama. I don't think it would hurt him. So the question is, could Itachi land Izanami? And honestly, the thing is no. Now, if he did land it, Itachi could win this. this. So this is pretty much the point where I will say, in one situation, in a situation where Itachi somehow manages to put Saitama under Izanami, they win. But besides for that single circumstance, they lose. No chance in hell. And honestly, I think the chance of him succeeding in placing him under Izanami is about like a 2% chance. It is very, very low. Now, I'm not going to talk about Hagoromo or Indra or Ashura, but I will talk, or Toneri, but I will talk about Kagoya quickly. My opinion on Kagoya is the same as everybody else. Saitama would one punch Kagoya. Like, maybe he would have a little bit of fun with it, traveling between the dimensions and everything, and he may have a bit of a hard time hitting her because of the, uh, Byakugan, but once he figured out the blind spot for the Byakugan, he pretty much grew. Byakugan can move through dimensions and stuff, so it would just be a matter of can he figure out the blind spot, and Saitama is really, doesn't, he's not an idiot, I think it's just that he just doesn't give a shit. I think if he really, if he actually thought about it, he would figure out the blind spot and catch Kagoya off, gu Kagoya off guard. And if he did it, let's be honest, he could probably run fast enough to hit her while she was moving between dimensions. So what is the verdict of this video? Could Saitama solo the Naruto work? Yes, he could. If Saitama wanted to, he could be each of the characters in a single punch with minimum difficulty. But only scenario where he wins is when Itachi, who only has a 2% chance of doing this by the way, places him under Izanami, and then that's very opinionated if that would even work. So could Saitama solo the Naruto universe? The answer is yes. Now tell me what universe I could do next time. It can be anything. I will leave a poll somewhere in the video. So yeah, well, I'll give you a couple of options. But you could also leave requests down below. But I, I kind of would like if you pick one of the ones in the poll. But whatever. 
Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video if you did. And subscribe for more videos.